Hi folks, I'm Tristan from CMI Music and Audio, here today with the amazing new called Prolog. This synth has seen a lot of attention since its announcement, and there are already a lot of great videos out there giving a good general overview of the synth. So for this video, I'd like to focus primarily on the oscillators and show a bit of what it's like to build a sound from scratch using some of the powerful new features. A little later on this year, Korg will be releasing the Prolog SDK, allowing you to design your own oscillator, opening up a whole new world of sonic possibilities. But there's already a whole lot of content in the Prolog, so let's have a look. Alrighty, there are tons of great sounding presets in the prologue. Um, if you want to have a listen to some of them, we'll leave a SoundCloud link in the description. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to start with the most basic preset, which is just a single sawtooth from one oscillator. Doesn't sound too bad for just one oscillator, but we've got two, so let's fatten that sound up with a second sawtooth. We can get it even fatter by detuning the two oscillators with this knob here. Of course, if we detune them too much, it just gets um, out of control and starts sounding horrible. Fortunately, the Prolog has one more trick up its sleeve, which is this voice mode depth knob here. Um, this knob's function will change depending on what voice mode we're in. We're currently in poly mode, which means that we can play up to 16 notes at a time, and each note is one voice. However, when we turn this knob clockwise, we'll see on the oscilloscope, it says duo. Uh, it's doing a couple of things. For one, we lose half our polyphony, so the Prolog 16 becomes an eight note synth. However, we're still hearing all 16 voices. We're just hearing, well, it's utilizing two voices per note. Um, so in this mode, we're hearing four oscillators per note. And the further clockwise I turn this voice mode depth knob, the louder that second voice gets and the more detuning is applied. It's nice and rich and fat. So we go from this sound. to this. And finally, if we want even more gusto, we've got this new low frequency compressor on the right here, which is only on the Prolog 16. It's got a nice analog VU meter and just one knob. So the further we turn the, up the knob, the more of a bass boost we get, but it retains the evenness across the rest of the frequency range. Really big fat pad sense. Alrighty, another approach we can take to pad sounds is um, adding a bit of modulation using the LFO and maybe even some effects. So I'm going to switch over to square waves and utilize the shape knob here, which will alter the shape of the waveform. In the case of the square wave, that means we're going to adjust the pulse width as we can see on the oscilloscope here. Which is a classic effect, sounds great when we have two square wave oscillators firing, and we can automate that using the LFO. Hit it to shape. With a nice rich modulation sound. If we want to thicken up even further, we can add the um, polyduo mode and even bring in some ensemble chorus. Alrighty, until now we've only been using two oscillators, but of course we have this really exciting third multi-engine oscillator here, which is um, what a lot of people have been curious about, and it actually has three modes of operation. Well, there are three categories of sounds it can provide. First of all, we have noise. There are four types of noise, each with a different filter. Now this is great for a variety of sounds, either percussive sounds or adding a bit of attack to lead and bass sounds, but it's also great for dirtying up pad sounds, getting kind of strange, unusual, dirty lo-fi sounds. Um, the next mode we have is VPM synthesis, which stands for variable phase modulation. And here we have 16 different oscillator types. Um, each one actually contains both a carrier and a modulator. The modulator depth is controlled using the shape knob. 
that's how we introduce those classic kind of FM sounds. But we've got a ton of waveforms to work with. Playing some more unusual sounds like sawtooth with modulation and modulated square waves. All right, so far we've only been looking at polyphonic patches, but there are some great oscillator types here that are more suited to monophonic playing, such as this fat oscillator type. And we are still in the polyphonic voice mode, which means we're just hearing one voice per note. Um, if I switch to unison mode, however, we'll start hearing 16 voices per note. And the voice mode depth knob here will detune all those voices to get even fatter sounds. I can bring in the additional VCOs here as well. All of a sudden we're hearing 48 oscillators all firing at the same time for really huge, outrageous kind of mono sounds. Okay, and not every bass and lead sound you're ever going to play is going to require all 48 oscillators firing together. So we do have this additional voice mode called mono, which is a bit more restrained in its operation. Um, in its default state, we're hearing just one voice per note. I'm going to bring in two more oscillators here. Some cool classic lead sounds here. But as I bring up the voice mode depth knob in this mode, it's going to introduce two more voices as a sub oscillator. As I take the knob up even further, we're going to hear another voice as an additional sub oscillator, an octave below that. Very basic here. If we want even more of a bass boost, we still got that low frequency compressor on the right here for another bit of added bite. that was just a brief quick look at the oscillator section of this amazing synth. Uh, we'll be doing more videos in more depth later on, so feel free to leave questions in the comments section. We'll try to get to them if we can, uh, but thank you very much for watching.